What is going on? It is Dr. Remy LeBeau coming at you once again from the x -Lair to provide you my very deep and insightful thoughts on the very last DCEU movie, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Aquaman 2 just debuted tonight. Um, it's been an interesting ride to get to this point. Um, the there have been all sorts of rumors about this movie being a disaster. Um, the studio withheld the reviews until this morning. So there was a lot of speculation that this movie was like just complete trash. And I'm going to tell you right now, this movie's not complete trash. This movie's actually pretty good. And I really enjoyed it. And I had a really good time with it. Um, yeah, I mean, like the expectations were so low, but like, even if they'd been higher, they would have been met because it was good. It was actually really good. But let me let, let's be realistic about this. Like Warner Brothers is rebooting the DC universe, right? James Gunn has come in. He's going to reinvent it. He's going to make it into what it should have always been. Like Zack Snyder should never have been the person that sort of define this world like it should have been somebody else Zack Snyder could have come in and made a couple of movies but he basically defined it and painted it in a very specific way right like super dour like uh just like uh, like this very kind of like Zack Snyder-ish tone was established to sort of define it and like that was highly problematic for it because it it's sort of kind of dug its own grave in a sense. Like it, it just kept going deeper and deeper into itself. And there was just really no way for it to get out of this sort of mold that it had established. So like, what do you got to do? You got to break that mold in order to get away from that. You got to break the mold, but guess what? James Wan. Okay. James Wan is an outdoor filmmaker, just like Zack Snyder. He, he's got his own, He's got his signature style. He's a he's a filmmaker with precision. And like the Aquaman movie, the first one was a James Wan movie. And it 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 succeeded in large part because of that. I mean, obviously Jason Momoa is very charismatic. Um the overall sort of spectacle of the film is very alluring. But if you have a hack at the helm, like that movie could have been a disaster and it wasn't. James Wan is a great filmmaker. So James Wan, who is an auteur, who has his own like overall way of, of defining a cinematic language and translating stories into it, through it, um, he, he, he kind of took, he kind of sh almost shifted the direction of the DCEU and potentially in a way that could have been successful, but like when you have your big, uh, your other big character, Superman already in the, in the tank, like, I mean, not that it was bad. It was just like, it, that wasn't Superman. It was like some like just brooding dour, like it was like the Batman nice version of Superman. That's not Superman. Um, like too much damage had been done. Diana, Wonder Woman. I'm sorry, Gal Gadot. No, that, that's all I'm gonna say. No, like I know people like Gal Gadot. I do not like Gal Gadot as, as Wonder Woman. I like Gal Gadot in the Fast and the Furious movies, but when she was cast as Wonder Woman, I was like, no, I was like, no, nah, this is not right. This is not the right casting. I get it as far as stature, like and and overall appearance, yes. But she does. She couldn't bring the performance, like she couldn't. She defined Wonder Woman to be herself rather than for the character to have its own life that 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 sort of was something bigger than the Gal Gadot person. And like, anyway, that was a disaster. Like, there was too much that went wrong. Um, too many wrong turns were taken. With The Flash, you had the Ezra Miller disaster. I think The Flash movie could have been, like, better received and done better. I mean, it wasn't a bad movie. I just don't, I don't love that movie, but I think the, the Michael Keaton of it all, I think that was part of like trying to save this whole year. Like there were a lot of desperate moves being made up until this point, like in the last few years, um, that I tried to kind of save the universe, but like 
the reality is the only way to save it now is to completely get rid of it. So this movie, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, is actually a good movie. But I, I feel like Warner Brothers couldn't stand behind it because like to stand behind it is to stand behind success. And like they're throwing all of this out. So it's like, how can you, this company who's taking this huge shift in, in one of its biggest IPs, its biggest properties, going to spend all sorts of money taking it in a new direction, get behind the last movie within the existing universe that is actually really good. If they do, then that sends a mixed signal, right? It sends a signal that like, we still support this universe. And then all the people that love this universe are going to be like, well, what the hell? Like, you you love it. Like, what the hell? Why are you getting rid of it? Uh, bring Zack Snyder back. Like, that, something needed to be done to end the cycle. And I, unfortunately, I feel like this movie has been a casualty of that. Up until now, now the movie's out. And now the movie has the ability to live on its own, you know, like stand on its own two feet. It is a James Wan freaking movie, man. James mother effing Wan, okay? This guy is like just top tier filmmaker, straight up. Like that guy, everything he does like is with precision. This movie, you can see it in every shot. Like it's not like like these messy, like big budget, big spectacle movies where it's like, let's just throw everything at the screen, like not care about the individual shots, not care about the fluidity of the action. Just like, blah, CGI, blah, action, and blah. And then you're just like, ah, you're just like, no, let me go. I, I need to run. This is not that. Like, this is very much like, all right, we're going on an adventure. Oh my God, there's all this crazy, there's all these crazy elements over here and all these crazy elements over here. But like it, like, it's good. Like, it works. I don't know. I had absolutely no problems with this movie. I love the performances. Um, Jason Momoa did a great job. Um, uh, Patrick uh, 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 Wilson, one of James Wan's staple actors. Uh, awesome. Love that guy, man. This movie was ultimately about brothers. It was about... Patrick Wilson and um, and uh, Jason Momoa is about Orin and and um, and Aquaman sort of becoming the brothers that they never got a chance to become, and maybe even you know I'm not gonna maybe even redeeming Orin maybe I don't know well you'll have to watch the movie to find out, um, but like I don't know all the performances Nicole Kidman was good um, uh, uh, Tamara Morrison was good who plays his father. Um, uh, oh, freaking, uh, what's his name? Uh, Dolph Lundgren, Lundgren was great. Uh, um, oh, um, Yaya Abdul-Mateen. Dude, like, one of my biggest uh, critiques of the original Aquaman was that they just kind of threw away Black Manta, and then this movie, they're like, nope, Black Manta, front and center, a, a, a force to be reckoned with, and that was great. Like, it really finally worked for that character. And Yaya Abdul-Mateen is just, he's a great actor. So, like, he brought the gravitas to it. So that was great. The chemistry between the brothers is definitely the backbone of this movie. And it works. Um, and, like, it, it wasn't like the first film where you have to, like, establish the world and all this stuff. Like, no, it was like, here's a story within this world. We've established the world already. And like, let's kind of just go on this adventure. And it was, it was an adventure, you know? And it was like a very classic sort of like big budget superhero like adventure, but like, like it was, it was executed with precision and it, and it was like a good time the entire time. So I wasn't like over it at all. I was just like, yeah, let's keep going. This is fun. I'm having a good time. Like, yeah, I know where it ultimately may go, but like, who cares? Like, like it's a it's it's like it's an enjoyable experience and like that's a lot of what the DCU has been missing all these years and even like Wonder Woman 2 which was like a disaster that was not an enjoyable experience it was like a lot of uncomfortable stuff in that movie that was just like ugh and that was a lot of like ugh, CGI blah, in your face blah, and it's like yeah but this was the complete opposite of that um, I really enjoyed it. All right, so I'll get into some spoilers now. So if you haven't watched the movie, um, make sure that you uh, hop off right now and then we'll finish this off here. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because 
Um, it, it, like overall, like I just have a pos had a positive experience, and I just kind of wanted to lay that down. Obviously, what happens in this movie doesn't really matter because the DC universe is being rebooted. But as far as the movie experience goes, super fun. So, you know, I mean, the movie is basically driven by the idea that there's this Lost Kingdom and there's this trident that is the key to getting the Lost Kingdom, like, out of its prison because it's been imprisoned because it was a terrible kingdom and, and this happened a long time ago and everybody forgot about it, but now, like, you know, Black Manta found the trident because he was trying to find power so he can get back at Aquaman and, like, Okay, cool. I mean, whatever. Like, uh, so he gets the trident, and then like, all right, the the mission is on. Like, first of all, like he needs he he finds he find Black Manta finds the place, finds the mission for himself. Then he needs fuel for it, and then that's when like Aquaman comes in. And we've established Aquaman, and then we establish oh, Black Manta is involved. So we need to find Orin. We need to get Orin out of prison so that we can then find out with Black Manta is great bunch of adventures here and there and then okay now we need to find Black Manta okay we found him another adventure here and then now everybody comes together and is going to stop Black Manta before he can release the Stark Kingdom and and uh I mean there were a lot of elements of like Lord of the Rings and and Harry Potter-ish like there was a lot of kind of kind of classical like uh, fantasy sort of storytelling in this movie but it worked, you know, it wasn't like this, like, gross soup of, like, ugh, like, I hate this, this, is, this tastes terrible. No, I was like, oh, I like this, oh, I like this, I like this flavor over here, I like this flavor over here. It was like, all right, cool, that works for me. Really, the heart of it, once again, was the brothers, them interacting, them ultimately, like, learning to be brothers, uh, and ultimately, this is about uh, Oren's redemption, and, the, and, that, and, that, and that did happen, and then finally, at the end, Oh, and also like, um, like uh, uh, Aquaman wanting to become, you know, like, uh, like united with the world, Br bring Atlantis out of the ocean, and then you know, there's like this whole journey of him struggling with the fact that he has this power, but it's really not power because there's all this bureaucracy involved, and then ultimately, through the actions of the film, he's able to get what he wants, which is to let the world know there is a lost kingdom. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, I guess it is a lost kingdom. Atlantis is a lost kingdom. And maybe that's also what the, the title's referring to. Maybe it's a double entendre. You know, ultimately, like, Atlantis was a lost kingdom, and now it's been revealed to the world, and now it can be part of the world. And it's... And the way this movie ended is almost like a lovely way to kind of sign off on the DCEU. It's like, okay, so there's this really big moment that happened within it, Aquaman got to have like an, a, a big place in the world. You didn't need to bring any of the heroes in. I heard there were like shoots that involved like Ben Affleck's Batman and Michael Keaton's Batman, but they got rid of all that shit. And, they're, and it's just an Aquaman movie and it's like, great. You don't need any of that other shit. This is an Aquaman movie and as an Aquaman movie, it works and I'm super happy with it. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Hey, you know what? Go watch it. And you saw this movie already and you're at the end of this review, go watch it again. It's a good time. James Wan deserves this to, to be successful. And the first Aquaman had a lot of legs and that got it to make a billion dollars. Like, I just can't see this movie not having legs. Like, I can't see, like, audiences not enjoying this and then wanting to go back and enjoy it during the holiday season. So I'm going to be very interested to see what happens with this movie as far as, like, box office and performance because, like, like, it's, I think audiences are going to enjoy it. And it's like a perfect adventure for this time of the year. Families are together. It's a perfect family film. I don't know. There's a lot working for it. I'm going to keep a close eye on it. Anyway, thank you for so much for checking out my video. Thanks for checking out my channel. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to Dr. Remy LeBeau's Xler at Xler X on YouTube. If you're seeing this on Instagram, I've got a link in my um, profile. So make sure you head on down to my channel and check things out. And as always, I want to remind you, and this is very important, okay? If there's a box, okay, and it's asking for a check, don't put a check in it. No, wait, no, <laughs> sorry, I, I got it screwed up. If there's a box, you better put an X in the box because ain't nobody checking me. That's right, ain't nobody checking me. You hear me? You hear me? Signing off, bye-bye.